welcome to another ServiceNow Express video blog post on the concept of form design, making and editing immersive forms in ServiceNow. Today's demonstration, we're going to be utilizing just a new table I created, a form design table for demo purposes. But keep in mind the functionality I'm showing you is identical for editing and configuring any of your application forms from incident and problem to change and asset management. So let's head on over to our form design and create a new form design record. As you'll see, I just simply extended the task table in this example. But let's talk about creating new fields, the different field types available to us, embedding some of our new options with Fuji release that we're in today, as well as how to make immersively responsive fields as well. So I'm going to come in, configure my form design. So the first thing we'll see is our visual form designer, which emulates the exact layout of my form. You can see I have a two tile, a two column section for form design. And after that, I have one section for my short description, description, and work notes. So let's start today's demonstration by adding our own section. We're going to simply press plus here to this new section. We're going to make this a one column section. And we're going to drag some new content. Why don't we start by adding some new field types in ServiceNow? So out of box fields will be available to you in this fields tab to the left, but new field tabs are also available to you by going to field type section. From there, we can pick a large number of fields from choice, currency, data structure, date, date time, decimal, duration, floating point number, integer, list, price, reference, string, time, translated text, true false, URL, and annotation or chart. So we're going to touch on some of the new items as well as some simple examples. So let's start by adding just a simple true false field. So a true false field really acts like a checkbox. We're going to call this our sample checkbox. So all I'm doing now is relabeling, renaming what's called the label. So on this form, this field I just created, I could click my cog and edit the actual properties. So you'll notice the name has defaulted to u underscore boolean underscore one. So this is what it's actually named for our column, not just the label in the database. So we can call this sample underscore checkbox. Something important to note about this is when you define a name such as sample underscore checkbox, ServiceNow will actually append a u underscore before whatever that name is you put in. So if I were to press save at this time on my form designer, so you'll see if I go into the properties for that sample checkbox now that it's been renamed u underscore sample underscore checkbox. So an important item to note anytime you're running queries, looking for this variable doing REST API calls, is it does append u underscore and makes it all lowercase for the name you enter. So now we have our checkbox in there. Let's add some of the new field types we have as well which include a chart, which is essentially an embedded report. So this chart field type is new. It's a great way to embed a report directly into your form. So we can call this, let's just say, open incidents by location. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. So we have a new checkbox field we just created. We have a chart field we just created. Maybe we want to add something else, a reference field. So reference fields in ServiceNow, this is if you want to touch on data that lays outside of this existing form on a different table. That's where we use a reference field. So I'll put it under my checkbox, under my chart, and we'll call this incident source. And now I'm going to configure it in this gear here. And you'll see you pick exactly what table you want to reference. So we'll make sure to name it. We'll name it incident source. But we're going to reference that incident table. So this is where you're picking where to search for values on. I could quickly flag it as being mandatory or read only. But we'll leave those items empty for now. And I'll press save. And we can now head back to my form. I'll right click reload. And what we'll see is that new section. My sample checkbox, which is a true-false field essentially, my incident source section, 
So you could see it basically brings that lookup list for finding a new incident, a reference field, as well as as a Fuji and embedded chart. So if I can go in, I can configure this chart if I'd like to. So here you could see it's a form chart, open incidents by location. And I pick exactly what report I want for this given one. So it's going to be all incidents by location. I could set a height, you know, let's give it a height of 400 and we'll update this. And you'll see now I've got a bigger leeway so it doesn't bleed. So that's where the height comes into play. It's not actually the height of your report, it's the height for this section. So now that we've added new fields, new sections, let's personalize this even further. So rather than new section, you know, maybe I want to call this something relevant. So we're going to call this our incident detailed section. So we could say incident details. And maybe I want to add this new section below. We're just going to take out the naming scheme for that. And we're going to call it conclusion. And I'll press save again. So important item to know too is not only can we have these different separated areas using our different sections, but we can very easily use a field type that's commonly not used, which is our annotation field. So an annotation field allows us to add very nice visual barriers between different sections. So here I drag down this annotation field. I can edit it and select from a number of different items, from section details, section separators, so that's like those tabs you see, to simply floating text or info boxes. So why don't I add a red info box here, and we're just going to say incident source for given form listed below. And I'll simply save that. And what you'll see is I head back to that form, and now what we have is not only our name sections, incident details with that sample checkbox, but here's a nice red annotation field visually giving me a differentiation that, hey, my incident source for the given list form is listed here below or right here in this section. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about making dependencies both visually and in choice lists. So let's take this sample checkbox, for example. Maybe I want to hide this reference field anytime my checkbox is checked. So I can do that by simply coming in and utilizing what we call our UI policies. So I've made this toggle chart report UI policy here for us to use. It's simply going to run anytime that sample checkbox field is false, so when it's not checked. We're going to go ahead and take the following actions. So our actions are going to be to set that incident field, the reference field we created for source incident or incident source, and we're going to set the visibility to false. And I'll simply press submit. So an important item to note on these UI policies is if the converse is true, it'll utilize the opposite logic. So if sample checkbox is true, our incident, you incident source, the visible is going to become true. And we'll see how that makes sense in just a second here. I'm going to go ahead and update this. We're going to head back to our form design and simply look at how our form looks now. And what you'll notice is we have this sample checkbox but that incident field, it's missing. And it only appears when our sample checkbox value is true. So you'll see now we just added a dynamic toggle functionality and that was done through our UI policies. So this is a second type of dependency that's commonly requested and that's between either selections on records in references, making sure you could only pick from certain ones as well as having only a specific number of selections for something like category or subcategory. So we're going to look at those two examples now. I'm going to come back into my form design and not only do we have our assign to field here, but we're also going to add assignment group in this example. So we're also going to add and we're going to take a look at on the incident form or category and subcategory for that second example. But let's take a look at our first example, the thought of restricting what you can reference on the form design. So you'll notice that this assign to field, if I select it now, I have 17 different users that I could use. But if I came in and I set the assignment group to be something specific like IT information technology, and then I came in to look at my assigned to, I have zero users available to me. So why is this the case? This is because 
we have field dependencies in place. So if I right click this assign to field and look at configure dictionary, what you'll see is under this dictionary definition for that field, it's dependent on assignment group. So now it's only showing possible user values in my assign to if they exist in the assignment group. So really easy to put dependencies on those reference fields. On top of that, we're going to take a look at a few more of these examples and how they come to play out of box. And this just our let's look at an incident. And we're going to be talking about dependencies such as category and subcategory, as well as restrictions simply on what you can search, such as on a company field out of box. So let's configure our form design. Let's take a, our field type section here and let's pull the company field. And we're going to just drag that under escalation and we're going to press save. So now I'm going to head back to my form here. Let's reload this form and talk about the different availabilities due to our filters. So first of all, in terms of just the references, we saw how we could make a reference dependent on another value. But what you can also do is add what's called reference qualifiers to make sure you could only pull a selection of numbers. So here under companies, when I search, I only get 17 records. But in our system, we have a large number of companies defined. So why is this the case? Well, if I right click and configure the dictionary on this company field, what you'll see is that it's got a reference specification, a reference qualifier. So a reference qualifier limits is basically like a filter on what you can pull from your reference. So in our case, on this company reference here, we're adding a filter so that the company has to be true. So if you wanted to bring all values, you simply need to remove that filter, come back to your list and do the search from there. But it allows you to make any types of filters on your forms or on those reference fields, excuse me. The second item we were talking about is choices. So you'll see if I pick software, I have email and operating system as a subcategory. If I pick network, I have a number of different network choices available to me. So the question is, how is sort of a choice subcategory category selection set up? Well, it's simply done. We pick our parent item choice. So let's say this inquiry help. And then I come down to my child items and I could simply right click now and configure choices. So it's purely pulling choices now for when the subcategory is going to be that inquiry help. So maybe we are just going to say general question and I'm going to add this here and press save. So what you'll see is now when it's inquiry help, I have general question available to me. But if I go to something else like software, that general question field is no longer a valid choice. So those dependencies is done by simply right clicking and selecting your choices on your child item when you have that parent item defined. And how you define, you know, what's a parent and what's a child is again simply through configuring the dictionary for this given choice list. And you'll see that this is dependent on, if we scroll down here, we can see it's dependent, use dependent field is check marked, and I'm being dependent on the category field. So very easy to set up reference specifications, reference qualifiers, so that the data you can select from these searching reference fields is sanitized. Very easy to set up choices so that only your subcategories are dependent on your category selection on any choice list. And even easier to completely set up a brand new form with different sections, with innovative, genuine, dyna genuinely dynamic selections, that are make specific fields appear or disappear, as well as embedded content per any items we like. The final item to note is again, any of those items you can make mandatory with simple right clicks, configuring those dictionaries, and selecting if this is a mandatory field or not. So very easy start to finish to set up a new field. And if a user tries to submit a mandatory field without selecting it, given a true false is a bad example. Let me come back here. So now this mandatory field, although a true false doesn't quite apply, it will have to put in a valid entry for those values. So hopefully this clarified and demystified form design and creating custom forms in ServiceNow Express.